Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements tutorial, we'll be making this picture of this deer walking into this field with some nice light streaks in here. Now, it may look like it's just a nice photograph, but in actuality, the deer is from one picture, the background is a different picture with some things cleaned out of it, and the light streaks are put in and created as well. So it's a complete construction or photo manipulation. All right, let's see how this whole thing is put together. Let me just get this out of the way. I have two pictures in here. There's the one of the deer. And then over here is the one for the background. I'll be taking this picture and placing it into this background picture. And that part of it's actually very easy. Just grab this picture. And you'll find both of these links for both of these actually up on the materials page for this video. You'll find the link for that in the description. Just grab the layer, drag it over here, and there's our picture just like that. We can now get rid of this. So we now have these as two layers. Obviously the deer picture is too large, so let's scale this down. Just grab the upper left hand corner and we'll scale the deer down. Oh, you know, somewhere around in here is not too bad. You know, about that big. We may tweak that a little bit. But something about like that. Okay, so we have our background, we have our deer in here. Now we need to do the photo manipulation part of that. I want to clean out this bench in the background there. This one branch here just looks kind of awkward. We'll take care of that as well. That can just be a little visual problem. You need to look for things like this where they're just spots that catch the eye and take your focus of, away from what you want to be looking at, in this case the deer. So let's hide our deer layer. Notice that there are no light streaks at all in this image. We'll put those light streaks in. Also, it's a lot lighter than I had and less contrast. You'll be taking care of that as well. So first things first, we'll start off with that chair. Let me just dock this into place. Now, if you don't know how to dock this or undock your image, let me show you that very quickly here. Go to the Edit menu, Preferences, and the General tab. And right here, General, Make sure it's the Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode is checked and Enable Floating Document Window Docking is checked. Make sure that both of those are checked. And then you can simply grab the title bar, drag it down for a floating window, or drag it up. You'll see a blue line. There you go. And let go, and it docks again. Real useful technique. Okay, let's just zoom in. And I'll first do something about this branch over here. I just want to get rid of this hard edge. The problem is that there's a, a nice dark edge line here with a light background, real high contrast, and this could look like something else in our picture. So let's just quickly mess that up a little bit. And we'll use the clone stamp tool. I have mine right now set at 37 pixels. That's fine. I'm just going to grab a little bit of the greenery in here and just kind of put it along the top doesn't need to be anything spectacular. This is going to be in a dark part of the picture. I just want to break up that edge so I don't see that hard edge. There you go. That's all that needs, so that's fine. This is a little bit more difficult. We need to get rid of the tr of this bench and show the trees in behind. I tried this using some of the fast techniques, like the technique where you make a selection and then auto fill that with the content from around it with the content aware fill and it doesn't work on this image it just you know sometimes that works great sometimes it doesn't in this image it just doesn't work so this has to be done the hard way which is using the clone stamp tool so i'll grab our clone stamp tool and i'll leave the same setting at 37 that's fine it's a soft edge brush as you can see there and let's just start by grabbing some of the ground here and we'll get rid of the easy part that's this bottom section just take care of that each time I go out here I'm just clicking on the ground and then I come over here and do my clone stamp okay there's real basic clean let's now 
change this a little bit, make it look a little bit more random in there. Again, it's going to be in a dark area, so it'll help to hide itself. Okay, that's the easy part. The hardest part is right over in here, so we'll do that part last. Now we'll take a little bit of this ground here, this edge. I want to see that edge. Just click right there. You can see you can, right there, you can see the edge in there. Pull that down and then just kind of paint along that edge. And we'll do this a few times and create a new edge over to where that tree is. And now do the same thing up and down in here. And just try to paint out that side. Now it may take a, a few spots in here to make it look good. Notice I grabbed a little bit of the tree over here and I pulled that tree over here to this other side. So it could take a little bit of back and forth like that. Now in here I need to pull from this part here down. It's going to be duplicated in the tree branches. We'll take care of that in just a second. So I'll grab right there against the edge of that tree. Alt click. Pull that down. And let's just take that clear down until we get down to the ground level. There we go. Make sure those branches don't look too bad. Same thing on the left side. Again, following the line of the tree. You can see there's the edge of the, the tree. I'll follow that line of that tree. And do this a few times. Kind of walk your way down the tree. And try to keep that edge lined up. And we're done. We should have the bench removed from that one tree. Same thing in here. Grab this a bit of this tree in the middle back in the fog back in there. And pull that straight down. And try to get rid of that bench in there. There's a little bit of a mess. So I'm going to grab some of the stuff from well, maybe it's just over in here. A little bit of fog from in here. And I'll just put it on some of those spots. Now this is all going to be darker, which will help hide this later on. We want to get close to that point. Now you see right down here there's a bit of a dip. Let's grab over here and I'll pull some of that dirt across. There we go. It fills in that dip. Now we have this line here. Right side of this tree. Same thing. Grab the edge of the tree. Line up that edge. And then I'll take a couple of, of shots here to paint on down and there we go that edge is fine. Now we're down to the hardest part. This is hard just because of the positioning on this. There's that tree behind and there's this thing in here. It's just kind of an odd position for that. So we'll do this part of the tree first and we'll try to clean that part up by taking a bit of this tree over here and putting it on top of that. So I'll start right here to grab this edge. And this needs to be done just little, little bits. So I want to keep that edge clean in there. Now again, don't forget this will be in a dark part of the picture, which will help hide any little errors on this. We still want it good enough that nobody's going to be looking at it. Okay, right there, and just come in a little bit and hide that. And that looks good. Again, I need to bring back in some of the edge of the ground here. I'll grab it from this side this time. And work that in so the ground is in front of that tree. And we need to fix this back area now. So for that, I'll go over here to this tree. And I'll grab from this tree right, right below that one branch right there. I'll click on that edge. Let's bring that over here and I'll find a good spot for that edge. Maybe right about there. And I'll bring that edge down. Went a little too far on that. Let me just undo that. And let's try that again. I can't pull quite as far. Again, click, find where the edge lines up. And we'll fix that tree edge in just a minute. And post out there we go. Okay, that takes care of that. I just need to fix that a little bit right in here. And I'll grab from down here and just move this back up again. 
Now at this point I want a smaller brush. I need to be a much, much smaller. So I want to be able to get that edge without getting onto that tree there. So and about 11 pixels and then just little short bits in here to fill that line in. And just about have it. So this actually is the hardest part of the whole picture. And I'm just going to pull a little bit of the detail up here down. So there's a little bit of banding in there from all this cleaning. So I'm just kind of pulling this down here to, to disguise that banding. Okay, there we go. That's taken out well enough. Pretty much doesn't show now. So a little bit of a kind of strange highlight here. I'm going to hide that highlight. I'll just grab some of this green right here and just do that. I think that looks good. Okay, now let's zoom out. Alt and the zoom key. This is way in the background. And it's going to be dark once we finish the picture. So with all of that, no one's going to see any little errors on that edge. So that's taken care of. So there we go. We fixed this edge of this branch. And we fixed that tree by taking out that bench in there. That's good. Now the next part, this is the most time-consuming part. And that's to take care of this deer. And what I want is I want to come in here and we're going to make a careful selection around the deer, around the whole deer in here, and use a layer mask to hide all this outside stuff. And the reason I'm using a layer mask, not just erasing that, is that with a layer mask I can always go back and I can adjust that edge if I need to. I can you know, come out or in as I need to. Now also the reason why I'm not doing this, I won't be doing this with the refine edge tool. What I would normally do on this kind of an image is I would take my lasso tool and do a careful lasso like this, clear around the figure. This is my standard technique for any kind of a, a random live image like this. A hard edge image, I almost always use the polygonal lasso tool and just take the time to do a real careful selection. Everything else, I tend to do this technique. I'll do a quick selection with the lasso tool. I'll go up here to select and use refine edge and then refine the edge. Now I've already tried that on this picture and because of let me just that selection, because the image is so close in color values in here, the refine edge really doesn't work. It works okay right in here. It works okay on part of this, but on most of this the refine edge just doesn't work. So this has to be done the hard way. And that unfortunately is the case a lot of times. You know, you have a picture that just will not work with the simpler tools like the content aware fill didn't work on removing that bench. I tried it, it didn't work. So I had to do that the hard way. Same thing here with this deer. This has to be done the hard way. I'm going to start this process. I'll show you my approach to this and then I'll pause the video, finish my selection so I don't make you watch me for 45 minutes or however long it takes me to do a real careful selection. And then I'll bring the video back up again. But basically what I do is I zoom way in, about like that. Then you can zoom in far enough, you can actually begin to see the pixelation in there along the edges. If I go you know, much, much further, you can see it right there. There's the pixelation on the edge. It's kind of a soft edge. When you're using the polygonal lasso tool, you want to come in right, so you're just coming in just inside of that soft edge. I can back out a bit. Of course, we're a bit too tight there. That's good enough for this, but I know where I want to be. Now with this, set your feathering amount here at one pixel. It just softens up the edge just a little bit, makes it a little bit more realistic. We can adjust this and we will be adjusting this later on. Okay, so now that I have that done, I'll pick a nice starting place. It doesn't matter where you start. The antlers are kind of easy in here. And I'm just going to begin making a very careful selection around the whole deer. And the reason why I like this particular tool for this is because it's very, very accurate. I can come in and find the exact spot I want to place my next line. Click on that point, it then locks it to that point. I can then take my time, find my next point, and click. So it's a very good tool for being very accurate with your selection. And this is why I tend to use this tool a lot because of that accuracy. 
Now the drawback with this tool is it's a little bit finicky. If you click too fast, it's going to collapse your selection down and you'll have to start over again. So make sure you take deep breaths, you take your time, you relax, put on some nice music, whatever it takes, and just get into kind of the Zen thing of making selections and take your time to make a good selection. This is the most critical part of this whole picture is this selection. When you reach a spot like this, if you go just off screen, it will auto scroll for you like that. Or if you hold the space bar down, you can use that hand, move the picture around, let go of the space bar, and you're back on the tool again. That's what I normally do on these kinds of images. Okay, so at this point, I would take my time and I would go clear around the whole picture and do a very careful selection of the whole deer. And just take however long it takes to make a real careful selection. Now if you double click too fast, that's what happens. It collapses it down like that. So I'll go ahead and I'll make that selection off camera so you don't have to watch me doing this forever. Once the selection is done, there's one more step to that and that's right down here. There's a little bit of the ground showing between these two legs. So at that point you come to the subtract tab. You start off with the default which is new selection. When the whole thing has the outline done, I, I went clear around here and then around this side and then up and around and so forth. And then once I came back to the antler and finished that selection, I came back to this part, hit the subtract and do just that little bit there to take that out of the selection. That then leaves me with my final selection. So that's the process that I'll be doing here off camera. And as soon as I've made that selection, I'll bring the video back up again and we'll take it from that point. All right, I'm back and there's the finished selection. Actual elapsed time on this thing was 12 minutes. So I spent 12 minutes to do a real careful selection. Once you have your selection made, we then want to convert this selection into a layer mask. And that's easy to do. Just go up here while the selection is still on, click on that button, add layer mask, and there we go, it's now a layer mask. And again, the reason why I did the layer mask is I can then zoom in on this. And if I have any problems on my edge in here, I can clean that up by adjusting the layer mask. Notice how where we're seeing the deer, it's in white. And where we're not seeing the deer, it's in black. It's that easy. If I want to hide more of the deer, I just paint along that edge with a black paintbrush. I want to show more of the deer, paint along that edge from the inside with a white paintbrush on the layer mask, and you can then adjust the layer mask either in or out. One more thing you can do, if you have a little bit of a, a haloing effect, just a little a hint of one right there, I'm not going to worry about that, that's not going to show in our finished piece, but if you had this kind of a haloing effect around the whole image, and it may be a bit, a bit thicker than that, you can minimize a halo effect if you're out a little bit too far on that. Make sure that you're on the layer mask side of this. Go up to filter, come down to other, and you can use this. The minimum set here, filter other and minimum, this will make the black part larger. It will actually come in a little bit on the black. Maximum moves the black out, makes the white part larger. So you can adjust the edge of your layer mask in or out by using maximum or minimum. And on these, you have a selection down here. So I'll set this out one. If I take the preview off, see there's a little bit of a halo right there, just a touch, have it just at one pixel. Preview on, and it puts it pushes that black edge in just a little bit and gets rid of that halo effect on there. So you can use the minimum here to make the black part larger. If I make this larger, you can really see what's happening. See there how it really just cuts in? I back out a bit, see how it kind of backs that out? So the minimum makes the black larger and the maximum makes the white larger. I'll go ahead and do it at just one, one pixel, just kind of clean up that edge in there a little bit. Hold the Alt key down, let's zoom out a, a bit, and there you go, so you cleaned up that edge nicely in there. And again, on the layer mask side, and that's filter, other, and maximum and minimum. A great way to kind of adjust the edge 
of your layer mask just a little bit. Okay, now that that's done, let's take a look at some fixes. We have a bit of grass in here that's in front of the image. A little bit on the back, not much. A lot right in there, really easy to see. So let's zoom in and do a little bit of clone stamp tool on that. And I also want to fix this leg. This is the important leg on the whole picture. I'm going to zoom out again. On the whole picture, the only part that really looks bad in here is this front leg. It's a bit too thin. The edge is coming in a bit too much on that leg. So we're going to fix that as well. Antlers look great. Head looks great. Back looks just fine. That's I'm not really happy with that leg. So let's take a look at these two areas. First, clone stamp tool. Now mine's still set at 11. That's just fine. It's a soft edge. Notice clone stamp in here. Make sure you're on the image side. There you go. Double click. Look for the light blue outline. And then we can clone stamp in here and just kind of clean up that stuff, that bit of grass that's showing over that edge. So just kind of take that out. Just a little bit of clone stamp. Whenever you see this symbol, it means I have the Alt key held down and I'm clicking to choose that spot and then I move my clone stamp up. You see the little plus sign, that's where I'm copying from and the circles where I'm copying to. It's just a little bit of this to hide some of that grass in there that's coming over the, the legs. There's not much and most of this kind of disappears actually pretty well into the image itself so it's not that much of a visual issue but I like being clean on these things as much as possible. So this little back and forth cleaning up some of these little little spots. Okay, that's good. Now on this, I want to bring a little bit more of the leg in here. So I'll go over here to the layer mask, click on that side. I'll change my brush over here to a hard edge, maybe a 13. And layer mask, there we go. And let's go over here to the paintbrush. Oh, wrong choice, there we go, 13 paintbrush tool right there. Black color on the layer mask. Notice the light blue outline. And I'm just going to paint in. And you know what? I'm backwards. Let me just undo that. No problem. Reverse my colors. White. There you go. White shows black hides. Can't forget that. Okay. And then just kind of come right down the edge here. So I think I took out a little bit too much of that leg right in there. So let's bring that back in again. Okay, everything else I think looks okay. I'm going to sharpen up the edge of this out. It's a hard edge brush, so if I come up against the edge, it's going to make that edge a bit harder. We, of course, had a slight softening of that edge. It's going to harden up that edge just a touch. And again, I'm painting on the layer mask, painting with white and into the white area and I can use that to extend the visibility again. That's why I'm using a layer mask and not just deleting that that stuff. Okay, I think that takes care of the cleanup on our deer. It's now back out and look at the image. Okay, there we go. So the deer looks good. Now the deer is the wrong values in here. So we'll take care of that next. We also want to pull the deer back a bit. Well, they're back over here somewhere. Actually, it's snapping right to that edge. That's convenient. And that's right where I want it. And let's bring the deer up just a bit. So the bottom of the deer here is just below that edge. That's a nice visual spot. And I chose this spot because our light rays are going to be coming in here and lighting up this area in here of the picture. So that's where the light is. And that allows us to have the deer walking into the light area. It gives the photograph some action to it, some you know some reason for what's happening. If I just put the deer in the middle, put the light on the deer, it would be a deer lit by a spotlight. Not that interesting. But a deer walking into a light area has more of a story to it. Okay, so there's the basic deer. Now, notice how the deer is just kind of standing out. It's popping out. It's too bright in here. I need to bring down the 
brightness, the contrast of the deer a little bit, not too much, but I need to, to fade the deer down because it's kind of a faded image. So I'll do that with a layer style up here, adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer, brightness contrast. Let me cancel that for one second. Make sure we're on the right layer. There we go. Make sure you're on the deer layer. Okay, layer, adjustment, brightness contrast, and click right here. Use previous layer, that's the deer layer, to create clipping mask. In other words, this is going to lock this control onto just that one layer. Okay, I want to bring my contrast down a bit. You can see there's the deer contrast, so there's zero. Just want to bring it back just a bit, just kind of knocking off that brightness of the color in there. I'm just kind of doing it visually. It looks like right about there is pretty good. About negative 39, negative 40 in there somewhere. It's a little more brightness to maybe plus 6, negative 39. This brings the values better to match with the image. We'll be doing more with the deer in just a minute. Okay, there we go. So there's our first basic setting. Deer is in position. The deer is basically set up. It's been cleaned up. All that's taken care of. Let's now go back to the background, and I want to darken down and increase the contrast of the background, making the background more dramatic. It's a little bit flat right now, a little bit boring. This is an easy step. So we take the background layer, drag it up to the new layer button like that, make a copy, and then we're going to take this layer and merge this layer with that layer using our blending modes up here and multiply. And there we go. We've now made it much more dramatic by adding those two together. Now it's too much, so I can back off on my opacity on this layer. And by adjusting the amount of opacity in here, I can control exactly how much of that darkening effect I'm getting. So if it's all the way up, you can see it's adding a lot more darkness. The light is showing up a lot stronger. There's more contrast in here. Colors are a bit richer right down in there, but it's, it's way too much. So I think somewhere around 44 or so I think is pretty good. Now if I hide that layer, there's the original, and there it is with the second layer added. It's a bit darker, and it's a bit more contrasty, and that's going to help our light rays look better. Now the deer is standing out too much. Again, we'll fix that in just a bit. It'll make sense. The head of the deer will make sense. We have our light rays in here. Say, so, okay, it's brighter here because there's a light hitting the deer. All right, so far so good. Now, let's take care of those light rays. Now, this is something I've, I've seen other techniques on doing this, and they get very, very complicated using specialty brushes, doing lots of fancy adjustment settings on brushes and things. You don't have to do all of that. We can do this in a much easier way. So let's make a new layer above that layer just to separate things out. Go over here to the Shape tool, and I have my set on Line, so just using just a straight line, 25 pixels. 25 pixel white, no arrowhead, and I'll be pulling down some lines from over here, upper right-hand corner, kind of right in here somewhere, and I'll do one just like that, right down to the ground. See where it's kind of light down here? Pull a line right down to the ground in there. Let's do another one right there, and another one back just a little bit and one more right there and I'll do one last one kind of close to this one but way over there they're all ending on this light patch there we go so that's going to be our light rays doesn't look like much right now that's okay we'll fix that let's first though take all these shapes notice each one of these lines came in as a separate shape so hold the shift key down click on the bottom shape so they're all selected right click and we're going to merge shapes. They're now all on one layer. We now want to convert this from being shapes to being just a regular graphic. So right click, simplify layer. And there we go, just a regular graphic. Now we're going to smear these out a little bit and make them look more like light rays using a filter and blur and radial blur right there. Now the radial blur normally looks like this, just kind of set up like that. I have mine set at 10 on the amount. 
you can take the middle point here and move that around. Let's put our upper right hand corner. That's where our light source is, upper right hand corner. Choose OK. And it blends those and blurs those out and makes them look like light rays. Now it's too bright up here. You could fix that by pulling that up a little bit. And let's pull this down a bit. There we go. And it looks pretty good. Now it's a bit too hard. You may like the hard edge effect. That's up to you. I'm going to soften this down just a little bit. So filter and blur and Gaussian blur. And I have my set at 19.4. It's just a little bit of a Gaussian blur effect in there. It just softens up those light rays. Okay, so that's it, those two filters. Now at this point, it's on top of everything else. So I don't want to have that. I want to have this looking like it's actually coming through the trees. And we'll do that by changing the blending mode here and change it to overlay. Now it's going to just disappear like that, but that's fine. So it's actually overlaying and actually in there it's just hard to see. Now you can bring those back up again by taking this. Let me just double click on this. This is our light rays layer. Make a copy of this. Drag it up here to the new layer button and makes a copy. And you see how we can see that a bit better now. Do that again. Drag it up here. Another copy and now it's a lot brighter, much easier to see. You can move these around if you want to individually or together. and use it to kind of soften up or adjust the light. So I'm going to pull over a bit so I get a bit of a dark streak showing up in there. Just kind of pulling that one around until I get that, that light streak effect. And there's the streaks. Notice that also gives me a bit of a mottled coloration down here below, and that's fine as well. So there's our light. Now if it's too much up here, it's a bit too much right there, you can tone that down by just erasing back on some of these layers. So I'll grab the eraser tool and let's bring our, set this to a soft brush, bring the size up a bit, let's see where we're at. That's too much. Yeah, 300 or so. And I'm just going to kind of come up here and just erase a little bit up in there on just that top one. If it's not quite enough, come down one and erase out of that next one. And that's all you need to do, just kind of darken that down. And that gives that nice light streak effect. Now the deer still looks a little bit strange. It's too bright in the back. It's bright here, that's okay, but it's too bright on the back end, and the color's off by a bit. So let's do a little bit of adjustment on the deer. Back to the deer, and I'm going to cool the deer down a little bit color-wise, but then bring the light back into the foreground up here. So let's go up to Layer, Adjustment Layer, and Photo Filter. Make sure it's set to Previous Layer and OK. And let's grab a Cooling Filter, 82. Put kind of a cool edge in there and choose OK, so that's fine. Now if it's too much, if that's too much blue, just double click on this and you can then adjust the density. I just want a, bit, a little bit of bluishness showing up down in here. Now notice on these, we have a white area over here. This is a layer mask. White shows, black hides. I don't want to have any blue in here where the deer's head is. So I'll grab my paintbrush and then Setting this to a soft edge brush. There we go. I'll bring that up quite a ways. It's 400, almost 600. I'll come over here. Make sure you're on the layer mask. Look for the light blue outline. Come right over the deer's head. And make sure we're on black color. There we go. And just paint right over the head. So that gives me a, a spot there which brings back that warmth. So I have my warm deer here and then a bit cooler on the back end. Okay, now come down to the deer. Deer is still too bright on this back end and at the bottom down here, I want to darken that down. So on this one, make sure you're on the deer image here. If you want to, as a protection at this point, you may want to make a copy of your deer. So drag it up here and save it like that and then hide that one. 
That's just a safety because I'll be working on the actual image. In case I mess it up, I can always go back to that one. Okay, now with the color set up black, same soft brush. And over here, I'm just going to kind of come in and just, just tap in a little bit here down on the back end of the deer and darken that deer down a little bit. So the deer is walking into the light. Now, let's come down to the background, top one here. And I'm going to darken it down a little bit in there as well. There's a bit more darkness on this side. And we're getting closer to this. Now I need a, a shadow underneath the deer. Let's go back to the deer layer. Make sure the deer layer looks good. And then back to the background. And let's bring the brush size down. About like this. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Now our light's coming down like this. So the shadow is going to be moving towards the front of the deer. Let's now make a new layer above that background layer. There we go. And back to our brush. I'm just going to kind of paint in just a little bit of a shadow in here, kind of like that. I want to move it down just a bit and let me just undo that move. Now, some of this other stuff is getting in the way when I make my move. It's grabbing other pictures. So I'm just going to lock everything else. It's just lock these layers temporarily so that they don't get in our way. Okay. I can put it down just a bit here. That's good. And I'm going to grab the eraser tool. Make it a bit smaller. I'm just going to erase in a little bit in here, kind of making the shape a little more random. That's pretty good. Let's now blur this out just a bit. So filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. This softens up that effect. And then finally, bring the opacity down just a bit. I want it just a bit darker in there, but not full opacity. Kind of like that. There we go. Okay, let's now see how we're doing. We'll back out. And let's fit on screen. Looking pretty good. I think I'll bring the background down here just a little bit stronger. A little more drama this way. As the background gets darker, the deer gets brighter and looks a bit more exciting. Let's come back to the deer layer. I'm going to adjust the contrast a bit on this. Come back here, double click on your contrast. Let me unlock that layer. There we go. Double click. And let's bring a little bit of contrast back in. There we go. It looks pretty good. Didn't need quite as much taken out once I had made the other adjustments. This also is why you do this as an adjustment layer that allows you to come back and fine tune after you're done. So I can always go back and adjust things. And there we go. There is the deer walking into this light path. So again, it's a deer from one picture, background from a different picture. We took out a bench over here. We fixed that edge over there. We fixed the edge of the forest. We brought the deer into this picture, resized the deer, of course, and did a lot of work on the deer itself, and also put in those light rays to make a very dramatic photograph. Let's just file save while I'm at it. There we are. And let's bring that picture up and see how we did. And zoom in, and there we go. So there it is. There's a photo manipulation on a deer taking background picture, deer from a different picture, and custom handmade light streaks as well. Okay, now is the time to look at your picture and think of any last little fine tuning or tweaking you want to do on that. I think everything else looks pretty good. I'm a little bothered by that back foot just a touch, and I think the head's too bright. So let's take care of those two things.
Go over here. I'm just going to go over to the brightness contrast again and let's try bringing the deer just a little more contrasty, I think, at this point. And bring the brightness down a bit. I think that's a bit more effective. There we go. Looks good. And then last little bit, let's just soften up that foot down below. So I'm going to just pull this back and dock it back in place. And let's zoom in on that foot. It's pretty dark. I just don't want to see that bottom edge quite as strongly in there. I went too far on that. Back up just a bit on. There we go. So it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little bit of a dark edge, kind of a hard edge on the bottom. Two ways to approach that. One is to clone stamp some of this on top of that. Other ways just to use a soft eraser and erase a little bit out of that. That's what we'll do. So go over here to the image and grab the eraser tool and fairly large. I'm just going to cut kind of top, just touch the edge there, right against the edge of that circle, and the edge of the circle is going to be fairly soft, just a little bit of that, and that makes that part of the leg just a little bit transparent onto the back, which has the same effect as if we actually had brought some stuff in front, and let's now come in just a little bit, and a little bit of cleaning up on the edge down there. And there we go. That should do it just fine. Let's now back out again. Looks good. I'm happy with that. Let's fit on screen. The whole picture looks good at this point. I think everything looks real nice. Let's bring that back up one last time. And there we go. Okay. That was it. Last little couple of tweaks on that. And I'm now happy with that picture. And there we go. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 